Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Dune Spice Wars. At long last, we can finally play the game. Huge thank you to, I believe it's Shiro Games, for sponsoring the video. The game is out in early access, and you can get the game if you follow the link in the description of the video. It'll also be in a pinned comment, and here it is on screen. But without further ado, let's get into Dune Spice Wars. I have been waiting for this game since it was announced, and I thought it would be interesting to just kind of jump into the game as House Atreides, because these are kind of like the quote-unquote good guys of Dune, even though Dune doesn't really have good guys. But this is like, these are like the main characters, you know? So we have various bonuses as House Atreides. We uh, can use the Peaceful Annexation ability, and we lose no authority, or other people lose no authority from treaties with me. I get more benefits from having a high lands red standing, but I can't pillage neutral villages. At 5,000 hegemony, which is like the uh, sort of winning score points in this game, we'll get a bonus to salary production and unit power, depending on whether or not we're on a positive resolution. It's kind of like the World Congress mechanic in this game or a negative re re resolution. And also at 10k hegemony, we can ignore charter prerequisites except for the necessary lands rad standing. I'll explain all that once we get into the game. And having played around with the game a little bit, like I I, I haven't finished a game, but I have kind of, I've, I've, you know, I've dabbled, I've, I've fooled around. You get to pick two counselors, would you? Uh, Lady, Lady Jessica is kind of like very hostile diplomacy. Very, very hostile diplomacy. Sort of, you can force people into deals that they necessarily don't want to do. It allows you to trade influence for authority. And authority is a very hard resource to get in the first place. So this, this gives you a lot of power on the map, um, this ability. And then we've got Duncan Idaho, who allows you to make friends with uh, Siege a lot faster. Siege are kind of where the local Fremen type people hide out. And he also makes it cheaper to annex villages. That's actually quite a nice ability. I like the annex discount. Thufir Hawat actually gives you like a super powerful trait, which is all of your agents have one additional trait and they gain 20% resource production for two days when their region is targeted by one or more operations. So Thufir, I feel, is quite powerful in many ways. But I'm actually a big fan of Gurney Halleck. In, in my opinion, sort of Duncan Idaho, Plus Gurney Halleck is kind of like the baseline House Atreides build. And then you swap one or the other for Lady Jessica and Thufir. And then I feel like Lady Jessica plus Thufir is like the advanced way to play. But the, the advantage of Gurney Halleck is you get the access to the veteran militia unit and all your military units just start stronger. So these are these are quite powerful. I, I, you could make an argument for uh, dropping Duncan Idaho for Thufir Hawat because you could do very aggressive agent stuff in this game. And I'm kind of I'm kind of tempted to maybe switch it up because I played with Duncan Idaho. Let's go for Thufir plus Gurney. Let's go more of a militaristic agent style game. And we're just going to play with like default settings with all people enabled. I'm going to disable the tutorial just because I've, I've done it a couple of times. I can explain the gameplay as I'm going. But yes, welcome to Arakeen. So there's, there's quite a few things that I need to explain here that are going on. Uh, this is the map. You can see here, there's, it's kind of hard to see exactly, but if I zoom in, you can kind of see there's like the gray area over here and then the 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 actual dune plane. So the, the map is basically round. There's like a whole circular area and it's divided up into misshapen hexes. Each one has roughly, I think, six sides. So there's usually, you know, they're kind of hex-ish. They're, they're hex ish uh, perhaps you might call them. This is our scouting unit, the Ornithopter. We can immediately recruit another Ornithopter, which can be worth it. I'm going to go ahead and micro this guy uh, to go explore. And I think I'm also going to go ahead and recruit a trooper and a ranger. Troopers are melee and they get a bonus to their attack power for every bonus they're receiving from an allied unit. And rangers uh, give a, a bonus of 5% attack power to people attacking the same target as them. So these guys work well in combination. The trooper stands in front and tanks, and then the ranger sits in the back and deals DPS. Although I would argue that maybe two troopers would beat a trooper and a ranger. It kind of depends on micro and how you set things up. So we're exploring this territory and now we have our military units in position. Just waiting for the ranger. I think I would like to go capture this village right now. So this is Aeg Dallas and you can see down here in the bottom left they have militia. Uh, they have a ranged militia and a regular militia. And every unit in the game has their own abilities and traits. I'm going to go ahead and attack that and then continue to explore because what I'm trying to get a hold of here is the spice field. This is an extremely valuable resource. It's how you generate most of your money in the game. And also, uh, the Emperor and the Imperium make some demands of your tax revenues on a regular basis. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's take out the ranged unit first. And I'm going to engage the ranged unit in melee because, let me pause the game here, uh, it suffers a minus 50% power penalty while it's engaged in melee. So this will make him actually weaker. And then once he's under 50% health, I believe he will suffer from panic, which will lower his combat strength again and increase his defense. So units kind of get naturally tanky as they uh, engage in combat. So this is like the majority of what your early game is going to look like in Dune is kind of this like grabbing a village, grabbing your first spice field, doing a little bit of exploration. I think I'm going to get myself a second Ornithopter too. 
so that I can explore a little bit more effectively. I think two is enough, although you can pick up an awful lot of them. So here's another town here. Rather than attacking this with my troops, I can use our ability, Peaceful Annexation. It will cost me some of my influence resource here, which is kind of like your diplomatic currency, but it will mean in 15 days I'll get this village at, without having to actually fight for it, which has some advantages because then I can use my military on another objective. And there's probably a town somewhere nearby that I can use them on. So we managed to capture Aegdalus, uh, and we will be able to annex this very, very soon. We just have to wait for a little bit more influence, which is a kind of like more like your... This is like diplomatic currency influences, and then authority is like your power, your imperial authority sort of thing. So it lets you capture villages. So we just have to wait until we can actually grab this. All right, we have enough resources. Let's go ahead and take control. Every one of these villages uh, costs water to maintain. Uh, water is like a universal resource on Dune. We want to have a water surplus at all times. Having a deficit will make people get very, very upset um, because water is life on Dune. And you just, if you don't have water, you're dead. Water is used to maintain your villages and also your military units. Uh, so it, it's a very, very important resource. And the economy in this game is extremely delicately balanced. Like you have to be careful, very, very careful how you balance what you purchase and what you don't. So it looks like there might be another village over here that we can grab with our military. Let's go ahead and send our military to Arakeen. Uh, and we can actually theoretically, I believe, once we're in airfield range, we can actually airlift our troops over to here. But I'm just going to walk them because I don't need to airlift them. So we now captured the city of Aegdalus and this is producing us one intel as a baseline. I don't really care for that. I don't need that. So instead, I'm going to come in here and produce a refinery. Uh, the refinery will allow me to deploy a harvester, which will then go harvest spice from the nearest spice field. And like we said, spice is one of the most important resources. Welcome to the tech screen, by the way. We've quite a few things that we can do in here. Uh, there is the sort of influence and diplomatic tree. Then there is the sort of authority and uh, sort of generalist tree. Then there's the economic tree. And then there's the military tree. There's kind of like a little bit of overlap between different ones. Like, for example, uh, this is mostly kind of based around upkeep and expansion. But there's like a little bit of resource generation in here, like lower upkeep. Uh, then you have more influence. Then you have more money production from surplus water. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of things you can do in here. I think my opening technology would probably be composite materials so that I, it's cheaper for me to build buildings. And I think that's like a really, really good thing to do. It's just pick up composite materials and grab that because that'll make any the expansion I do in these three towns and I, I plan to stay on these three towns for quite a while as I build up my economy I want to I want to have like a robust economy before I start making plays for like the polar region where there's a lot of water um, or perhaps even attacking another player it, it kind of pays in this game to play very slow and methodically and have a build in mind you can also hold down shift to speed up the game's pace Mostly what I'm waiting for now is for my refinery to be finished and then also for me to have the influence to capture this town. Although I can go fight the town now. I do have to watch out for sandworms because they will appear soon. And very, very soon I'm going to have three towns. Although I actually... Mm, hold on. Which of these regions has the most wind? So it looks like Aegdalus has the most wind. I am going to need more water. Now, there is a kind of pro move that I've been doing in my games where I, I attack the third town and then I delete my ranger... And then because I attack the third town, I'll have five water and I can claim it early. So it's kind of like a little bit of a pro, pro-ish move. I, you know, I say pro, I, it's my second game, really. Uh, but we have our harvester now. So we're going to go ahead and deploy the harvesters. Harvesters as a baseline make um, 20 spice per interval of income. I don't know what the interval is. I think it's like daily or something. But they will attract sandworm. And you can manually recall them. And they will have no penalty to sandworms, or you can have them on auto recall. On auto recall, they will lose 5% of their spice production, but losing a harvester is kind of annoying. So I like to, you know, I, I just leave them on auto recall. It means I can focus my attention on, on watching the game and enjoying it. Oh, that was a mistake. I should not have attacked here because I'm low on supplies. Uh, so I'm going to come back to my homestead here and get healed up because I shouldn't have attacked there. Uh, I'm out of supplies, which means my guys are taking attrition. Units have many, many different stats. They have power, which is the amount of damage they do in combat. They have um, health, which is how much damage they can take. They have armor, which lowers the attack damage that they take. It can be lowered by demolition units. And then they have supply, which is how long they can stay out of your um, influence zone. And the rate at which supply is drained is based on the speed of the wind. Higher speed wind, 
you take more attrition. So let's go attack Hain now. And I really want to control Hain because Hain has a minerals deposit which will increase my Plazcrete factory production. Aegdalus, uh, I think we will open up in here. We have enough Plazcrete for a Plazcrete factory. They're relatively cheap. So I think I'm going to build a wind trap here. And I think I'm safe to build a wind, build a wind trap here. Um, this is a six wind strength area. And wind traps produce three water for every level of wind. So I'll go ahead and pop that down here. It's time for another technology. We do have composite materials. Uh, structured warehouses could be good to grab. I think I would like to get survival training because that would lead to new homeland, which would allow me to train mili militia units faster. And the first militia unit I train in every village is 80% cheaper. This is actually a new unique technology for House Atreides. So that's kind of the direction that I'm working on here. Oh, you're taking a lot of damage. So it looks like we've managed to defeat the military here. We just have to wait for the water. And we'll soon have the uh, authority to actually take this village. And then very, very soon we'll have higher Marat as well. So I would say our position is really good. And we just got our first agent. So agents are a really important part of the game. It's one of the main ways you have of uh, generating, what I, you know, these missions. Really, these are spells that you can like play on the map. Um, if you've ever played like a magical type RTS game, that would be the way that I would describe these. Like you've got a probe set up, this like lets you scan the map. Uh, you've got poison the reserves, which reduces enemy supply, so they start taking attrition sooner. You've got gear sabotage, which reduces enemy power. You've got supply drop, which gives supply and health regeneration to your units. These are all kind of like the easy ones, and then you've got like more advanced things. You could steal resources from another player. You can prevent the Fremen from attacking you. This one is really good to have. Uh, in the bank at all times because sometimes raids are unpredictable and dangerous ceasefire prevents combat it'll give you time to maybe get some reinforcing troops to a battle and then there's you know and then they get in varying complexity all the way up to the win condition ones which are basically infiltrate the enemy faction and murder their leader so there's there's a lot of really really cool stuff going on in the influence screen uh, but the first thing you have to do is actually assign your agents now because i have thufir hawat as my uh counselor all of my agents have an additional trait so uh he is an intendant and he also increases my agent recruitment speed that's quite good the speed at which your agents are recruited is important uh one of the most important things i think i get here is authority because authority is the main thing that you're going to be using to expand so i'm going to go ahead and build up my influence on arrakis I will slowly inf infiltrate Arrakis and the level of infiltration that I have in Arrakis will dictate some of the missions I can do. Like for example, I have to have level one Arrakis infiltration to do poison the reserves and gear sabotage. But if I want to drop supplies for my troops, I want to have some infiltration into the spacing guild. And then you can also infiltrate your neighbors for higher intel production. These are relatively low intel production jobs, um, whereas infiltrating your enemies, those are high intel. But your spies can be moved around at will. It's quite handy to do so actually. Uh, so now I think we're just about ready for this. We're just waiting for the water thing to be built. And like I said, you can hold down shift and time will speed up. And you can see the little uh, spice carriers moving back and forth from Aegdalus. The game is very, very beautiful in a very strange way. You wouldn't think of like a game entirely built around sands and stones and kind of what is inherently a, a slightly ugly environment, right? And that it's kind of like samey, but the game has a certain beauty to it that I really, really enjoy. And the music is really thematic and you know as a as a person who is just like a huge fan of dune um it's an absolute pleasure to play a really damn good dune game i never really played the original dune rts's way back in the day made by westwood i, I kind of played them a little bit um but i never really got into them um so we're taking this town by the way so it's really really fun to play a game that is kind of unique and interesting um, so I think our main objective here is... Oh, it looks like there's actually a crashed shuttle. I'm going to go ahead and get an ornithopter to gather that because that's worth money. Then this ornithopter over here. I wonder, are there any missions I could do? There's an abandoned Fremen camp. I'm going to go ahead and grab the Plascrete from that. This will give me some Plascrete. So you can basically do missions. There's kind of two things you can do with nearly everything in the game, right? You can infiltrate it with your agents or you can explore it. Infiltrating it with your agents will give you some sort of like empire-wide bonus. So for example, like military development or will increase the chance that you detect a siege or I can get Plascrete just to do economic stuff. So you usually have like an empire-wide bonus and then like a quick temporary right now bonus. And I like to take the quick temporary right now bonuses because it lets me build up my economy super fast. So now that I own Hain, um, it generates a little bit of money, but what I really want from this place is to get a Plascrete factory for that 45, that 50% boost uh, to the Plascrete factory production. Uh, now that I've explained a lot of the early game stuff, I'm going to speed up the time. So things are going to start happening a little bit faster. Things have been going very, very slow for now. Um, and, and over time, I'm going to speed up the game and it'll be hard to keep up perfectly, but don't worry, I'm here with you, okay? I'm here to help you through this. So perfect, we managed to expand them. They, uh, 
explore the abandoned Fremen camp and we can resolve it now and get a big boost to our Plascrete, which will allow us to continue to expand. Something I'm actually just like a huge fan of is building Plascrete factories basically everywhere. I know it sounds crazy, but this is like your main resource for expansion and stuff like that. You know, they, they pay for themselves so incredibly quickly. So just like making them lets you lets you expand like crazy. All right, let's go ahead and finish this mission. I'll take the money. I'm going to put one of my ornithopters on auto recon. And then I'm going to manually control the other one. So I can look for things that I care about. All right, brilliant. So more Plascrete factories are finishing. And we get another tech. Let's grab New Homeland. Uh, in every town that you have, you can build militia. So for example, Harmara here. Because we took this over by um, peaceful annexation, it already has a militia in here. So the town already had its own, uh, uh, you know, thing. So what we want to be looking for is, ideally, I think the, the perfect militia is for us is like a veteran militia plus like two ranged militia is like pretty good or even just three ranged or three veteran militia. I think I'm just going to pop down a veteran militia in here later. For now though, it doesn't need defending because right now our territory is so small that we can basically defend any anything from having a garrison and Arakeen. Because our troops can, no matter where they are, right, very, very easily teleport from one, like I can transport them over here very, very quickly. Um, so we're, we're, we're relatively in a good place. So we just paid our very first imperial tax. Now paying imperial tax is kind of important. Uh, you can see here, uh, I got 300 hegemony for sending that spice tax. Uh, and that's victory points. That's getting you closer to the win condition. Uh, and this screen will tell you like, how aggressively can you stockpile spice or how aggressively can you sell? Uh, look, I, I don't know what a good price is, to be honest with you, for uh, spice at the moment. So I tend to just kind of sell most of my income of spice or, or, or leave it at 50-50 as kind of like a fire and forget type thing, depending on the situation. I could probably sell aggressively here because I already have uh, a pretty good chance of having the stockpile for the next tax. We have another unassigned agent, which is great. I could infiltrate Arrakis at a higher level if I wanted to keep expanding. And that's not a terrible thing to do. I do think it is good to get control of the spacing guild relatively early, purely for the supply drop can allow you to expand quite well. However, Remember, I can peacefully annex people, so I might want to take control of the lands rat, which would give me influence production. And I think that is what I'm going to do, because I can use that influence along with my authority to actually keep expanding peacefully without having to go to war, right? All I have to do here, I don't have to march my troops all the way over to Z Zarya. I can just click this button and get the city 15 turns later. And so I think that is kind of the way that you do want to be playing. That's how you want to be playing House of Trades. It's very diplomatic, very chill, very relaxed, very sit backy, very, uh, you know, keep things going. I'm going to go ahead and come over to my harvester, by the way, and I'm going to spend 50 manpower, which is this resource up here, which is used to upkeep your armies and for a couple of other things. Uh, I'm going to use this to add a crew to my harvester, which will increase its spice production by 25%, right? Plus five, uh, which means I'll have more spice to sell and keep and stuff like that. Now, here is one of the most important game mechanics has just activated. The very first Landsrad Council is going to be starting. This starts off relatively innocuous but as the game goes on the impacts of this become very important so you could see here uh you could save a lot of money uh you could get more authority production or you could have cheaper unit recruitment i think i would personally look for authority production but rather than just being positives there could be negative proposals and depending on which of these like council positions that you hold and you can hold all of them i'm pretty sure you can choose to re-roll these or, you know, influence the uh, diplomacy. So I'll start voting in six days and we'll talk a little bit more about that once we're there. In terms of resource production, though, I think it's time we take a little bit of a look at our land. Um, we're low on fuel cells, so we would want more fuel cells if we decided to get another refinery. I don't see a town around where I could justify a refinery. There is a processing plant over here, which I think would encourage me to pick up structured warehouses because that would unlock the processing plant building which would allow me to increase my salary income quite a bit so i think when i take huval that's probably the direction i'm going to go we're also waiting until we have enough hedge money to actually upgrade arakeen so the wind strength is only four here i think four four is acceptable but five is kind of like five and six are like the sweet spot man you know uh like if we take a look over here huval it's only four zarya it's two uh ha alula is four and four so i would say 
if I'm going to build water anywhere, it would be in this five zone, but I don't need the water right now. I have enough water to keep expanding and increasing my army. I'm trying to think about what resource could I really use right now. I could opt to get knowledge or influence. Now, the thing about influence is it gives you more votes in the Landsrad, um, but tech, I feel like, is also kind of really powerful. I don't feel like I need military bases or missile batteries or airfields or anything like that. Arakeen has its own airfield. Maybe if I was expanding down to like Zarya, I would put down an airfield so that I could defend this harvester because it's a bit of a trek here. There's like difficult terrain and having an airfield here would allow me to project power into like maybe these zones as well. So I think in terms of increasing my economy, I don't have very good choices right now. Maybe the best thing I could do is to grab a maintenance center. They have no upkeep and they lower the upkeep of all of your other buildings nearby. And if I built a maintenance center in Harmara, that would lower the upkeep of all of the adjacent area buildings. That seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a maintenance center. It only costs Plascrete and it will save me significant amounts of resources over the course of the game as I build up my regions. Now in the city of Hain, I think an argument could be made for getting fuel cells just to keep my economy going. Yeah, I think I will get some fuel cells here. Although, mm, here's the thing, I don't need the fuel cells right now. That's the thing, there's no point in spending resources because having excess fuel cells doesn't do anything for me. So maybe I would be better off getting either a research hub or a listening post. Mm, it's a hard choice. I feel like my build with Thufir, and I think I want to play around the lands rad this game. So I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a listening post. So the Har Harkonnens have a trade proposal for me. They want my influence, my Plascrete, and they'll give me spice and intel. I don't want either of those things. But what I will do is I could open up a trade deal with him and ask him what he values. So he seems to value influence, spice, and money um, very, very highly. So how would he feel about a trade treaty? What if I spiced it up? by adding a little bit of spice on the side. So this, or this is a research agreement. Ooh, that would cost me authority, but not cost him authority. That's a dangerous proposal. One authority is a lot. Like really, it's 20% 20, it's 20 of my authority. I would be giving up for 20% knowledge boost. I actually don't think that's worth it. So we'll, we'll leave diplomacy by the wayside. Even if we do, as the House of Atreides, we want to be friendly with most people on the map because that's kind of how we play. Like we're the diplomatic guys. I'm also going up to maximum speed now. The game doesn't go crazy fast but things will happen a little bit quicker now so you should see my resources kind of jump a little bit as the um, resource center finishes and you can see here now all my upkeep is reduced which is perfect and i can now start to look into maybe expanding and getting more resources it looks like we might have found a special zone over here i'm seeing some kind of like fungal growth or something it's kind of interesting the Moondew Vale. Ah, so there is some local wildlife here. Uh, this has 100% wind trap resource production and gives me 500 hedge money to get a hold of Ultar. I'll probably grab Huval first because it's cheaper. A raid has been detected. Okay, so this is an important piece of information. Let's get our troops uh, shuttled over to where they belong. I know that's not very far, but listen. I um, need to get them over to Hain. I also need to get a veteran militia, although I'm waiting for new homeland. Now, the interesting thing is... I happen to know that there's a siege somewhere in this direction now because that's where they came from. They came from down here. So they could be in the observatory mountain. So we might want to look to get control of that too later. Okay, uh, a sandworm detected. That's not good. Well, thankfully, my harvester will teleport away or well, well get carried all the way. We have development research. So we got new homeland, which gives us a defensive bonus plus cheaper militia. Let's go ahead and grab structured warehouses. This will allow me to build a processing plant, which is quite important. So it's time to vote in the Landsrad. I think of all the things that I want, the most thing that I want is the extra authority. The other things I don't care about. I mean, salary upkeep would be nice, but getting extra authority means I can continue to expand. So I'm going to put like all of my influence into this to make sure that I get it. Otherwise, I will just support this and I will vote slightly in favor of this to see what passes but i really want that extra authority production which i think kind of helps make a decision about what i want i think the big thing i need is an increase in my salary production so i want to be looking for these rare elements or potentially another spice field so this might be my next peaceful annexation target zarya and i think that's what we're going to do because i want another spice harvester so in 15 days zarya will be mine and it looks like we found a harvester wreck so we could do an economic development or gather spice when does my next agent become available? Oh, that takes four minutes. Yeah, I'm going to take the extra development. So that'll take four minutes based on my agent's work. We have an energy source over here, which would allow the fuel cell uh, factory to be more productive. 
And so this is the deep desert. Units take insane attrition in here. You do not want to have units running around in here ever. Like never, ever, 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 ever. Avoid at all cost. Ah, my harvester is inactive. Let's go ahead and deploy him back. So the vote went through and it looks like the Solari upkeep passed, as did the authority production for me. The unit recruitment cost went to the smugglers, but I wasn't really worried about that one. The, uh, the, mo the two most important parts that I cared about happened. And it'll be a while now before the next Landsrad comes. So that extra influence production, that extra authority production is great for me because it means I can expand more rapidly. Uh, and I'm also now able to very happily re recruit uh, veteran militia who are not affected by unwavering penalties. So this is a very defensive build that I'm going for here. Uh, they're very cheap. The, the very first one that I pick up is super cheap, right? You can see that was, uh, it was like 60 or 30 plus four manpower when they're regularly a lot more. We've got some crashed ornithopters. We're continuing to explore, revealing the map. It looks like the edge of someone else's territory is perhaps over here. It could also just be the, the color kind of deceptively tricking me. We're going to prototype here wants me to retrieve two crashed ornithopters. And this is a mission that if I f finish, I will get an experimental ornithopter. Well, there's one here. This is super deep into a deep desert. That would be very hard to do. I could grab this ornithopter very easily and maybe even grab this one. Let's grab you and then see if we can grab this. Because if I could grab both of those, this would do this mission uh, and get me a uh, ornithopter which would be pretty based. You can see, look how badly this unit is taking attrition here in this uh, deep desert. You grab the thopter and then you get the hell out. So like to put that in perspective, that's worth 400 plus two fuel cells. I could advance military developments or gain money. I don't need money right now. So I'm going to advance my military developments and keep my thopters exploring. Let's go see if we can hit this, uh, this destroyed thopter over here too. He's going to slowly take attrition. It's not so bad over here. The wind isn't too strong compared to the deep desert. So one of my agents is unassigned. I'm trying to think about what, what would I like my agents to do next? Um, it would be nice to have better intel income. So I could assign them to another player. However, I do feel like just getting more authority is like super powerful because authority is like the expansion resource, right? You need authority to expand. You cannot expand without it. We gathered a new development. So we have structured warehouses, which gives us the processing plants. We could go for Atreides merchants if we wanted to go more of a diplomatic money route. Um, modular parts could also be a good way to spend our manpower to increase our spice production, which would increase our salary production, which kind of feels about right. I think I want to get local dialect studies now, though. Um, this will lower the cost of annexing a village and also give me access to the crafts workshop. Intelligence network is something I would like to pick up relatively soon, but not necessarily immediately. I would also like to get spying logistics soon. I, I, I kind of need to, I think I need to get local dialect and then go for spying logistics so I get my agents faster because the agent recruitment speed is actually kind of huge. Let's get the thopter. So we got two thopters, which means we finished this mission and we can confirm this and get an experimental thopter. I don't know what's special about this. Oh, wait, scavenged ornithopters are temporary only. Oh, oh, I thought they were permanent. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so that's a mechanic I, I didn't fully understand, and now I do. Um, however, but the experimental ornithopter is an upgraded version of it. I don't know what's special about it. Maybe it's just permanent? Mm, kind of cool. Huh? I don't know what to tell you. I, it's just, it's just better, I guess. Wait, why are you taking attrition? Oh, my ranger died. Rip, that's a rip and pepperoni. Not to worry, um, we didn't need them anyway, copium. <laughs> so the good news is that we're doing relatively well. We have like a good supply of different things and we're expanding peacefully and we're, we're, we're setting a good pace. I think I would like to get control of Huval now um, because that'll be Solaris production. So we'll go ahead and peacefully annex them. Uh, the Atreides are very, very chill in the way that they play, very chill defense. Now you can play aggressively, true, but they very much so like, they, they kind of feel like to me an economic type thing. Let's go ahead and resolve this. New village control at Zarya. Okay, so the very first thing that I would like to put here is an airfield to extend my zone of control. I'm going to go ahead and recruit a ranger and a heavy weapon squad to maintain a relatively strong military. I'm going to have them positioned in Arakeen. We just paid our imperial tax again and we're well on our way to pay for the next one which means our hedge money increased and we're still making good money. I think it's fairly safe for me now 
to go ahead and expand a little bit in some of these areas. For example, I could get a research hub. I think I will get a research hub because I'm a little bit behind on where I should be technologically, right? I'm not like massively behind, but like, you know, I could look like, like a little bit more tech, please. So it looks like somebody is already down here towards the polar sink, which is kind of an interesting position to be in. And it's time for another Landsvad council vote. Now this Plascrete upkeep thing, this is painful if you're targeted with it. Like, I mean, super bad. The other two, like every single one of these is massively impactful, okay? The Landsvad guards, if you've been having, like this gives you unmatched, you can go pillage everyone is basically what I'm saying here. The Landsvad guards are insane. You become unkillable uh, at this stage of the game if you get this one. This like ruins your economy and this makes your votes weak. This is, I think, this would be bad for me, but it wouldn't ruin my game. This would be survivable. If this was used against me, this would kill me. Um, like it would just do so much damage. Although there isn't really anyone nearby to do it to. Um, and I don't really have a good use for the Landsvad support. So I think of all the things that I would like to do, I'm going to look and see who's doing the best. And it looks like the Fremen are doing the best. So I'm going to I'm going to say that their stuff is going to cost more upkeep. And then I'm going to decline with as much of my influence as possible the Diplomatic Congress. Because, um, you know, but this one I don't care about because I can't use it. Well, I can, but like I'm mostly peacefully annexing, right? Landsraad Council vote. Proposed resolutions are locked. You can now vote. Excellent. And I was looking for something I was going to do. Ah, right. Yes, I was going to build another harvester. Now, harvesters are expensive and they also take fuel cells. So that's something I need to think about. I think in Egdalus, I will build a fuel cell factory. And that's for an important reason. Later on in the game, I'm going to get a technology um, that will give me a boost to my harvesters based on the... I can't remember where it is, but basically the more yellow buildings I have in this spice harvesting area, the more spice I will harvest. So it's, it's quite an advantage. So I'll go ahead and pop some fuel cells down here and then I'll be able to get another harvester relatively soon. But now that I have that airport, the the, the shuttle port, I can actually shuttle from Arakeen to Zarya. Now that's like not too far of a journey, but this essentially, you know, for the cost of a bit of money with a spacer guild, lets me project power across a much larger field of the map. We have a trade request. He wants my influence in my Plazcrete. Uh, I don't want to give away Plazcrete because like that's what I focus my economy on. So like I'm just giving away my advantage to someone else. So I think it's time to go for spying logistics. I want more agents. So in the meantime, I will pick up the intelligence network, which will increase my influence in Solari production while I'm, infl uh, while I'm infiltrating Chome and Landsred. I managed to grab myself a research hub. So that's going to give me one knowledge. Per, I don't know what the interval is, but it'll basically mean that I research faster, which is nice. I do have enough Plascrete to potentially uh, maybe do some like military stuff. I could increase my manpower production and my manpower is a little bit low right now. So maybe that's a good idea. Let's get more manpower. You don't need like a massive surplus of manpower, but you definitely don't want to be this low. Also, I need to start thinking about water too. Um, I think I don't have water production in Harmara. And this is a level five producer, so I'll go ahead and expand it. Now, it gets really expensive to expand, um, but I'll build a wind trap here because they're relatively cheap and it gives you a lot of water. So how did the vote go? It hasn't gone yet, but it is about to fire. I wonder what the outcome is. So it looks like, ah, uh, okay. Influence production has been tanked. The Fremen did get smashed here and we do in fact have a raid coming for us. Now, where is this raid? All right, it's coming from here. Let's go ahead and shuttle our troops over. We do have a decent amount of uh, of militia in this town. We have two militia plus a demolition militia. But I'll bring my troops over here anyway, just so we can make sure we get, we prevent this, you know, damage and stuff like that. Plus, it's an opportunity for these troops to gather experience so that they can get closer to leveling up. So that was like the, that's why you build these airports. They're super, super powerful. Uh, speaking of airports or, or, or like economy, we can get another refinery so we can start harvesting even more spice. And then we can use our manpower to increase our spice harvesting rate. So I'm feeling pretty good about my economy. My Solaris income is a little bit low. Um, that's kind of worrisome, but my exploration is fantastic. I have like half the world explored. I have pretty good control. I'm ready to potentially expand. Once I have Huval, I'm ready to take Ultar. I just need to wait for water and I'm getting water from Harmara soon. Uh, there it is actually. So I can go ahead and start the peaceful annexation of Ultar. Uh, development research. I think we want spying logistics because we want that agent recruitment speed. So that's like huge. 
the uh, 100% agent recruitment speed and you can assign one more agent to all factions infiltration. Oh, sandworm detected and my harvester automatically evades. So uh, this is why I accept the um, slightly lower production rate of having the automatic thing going. I just, it, uh, it works for me. Now, the only downside is you do have to redeploy the harvester, but that's like a very, very small meta micro. We have another inactive harvester. Let's go ahead and add a crew to it and then deploy it and put it on auto recall. And uh, now we're going to be doubling our spice income, which means we're going to be cranking out Solari here. And finally, we have reached the hedge money threshold of 2000, which means we can start building up Arakeen, our main base. So there are three types of districts you can build here. Economy, military, statecraft. You start with the first one of each unlocked, I believe. And then you can unlock more through research. And depending on which of these districts that you fill with buildings, you can... Uh, get stacks of different bonuses. So for example, if I wanted to get this 10% economy development speed thing, I would put a research center on this district and then that would give me that. And I do think I want the research center. It's quite good, right? Three knowledge, 3% three knowledge, and then a 30% research hub upkeep. This is pretty good. So I would like to get that relatively early. In fact, I kind of want all of these buildings because they all have like super, super powerful effects. These first, these level one buildings um, are really, really good and just generally useful. So like extra manpower per controlled village, like that is massive, like hard to find value elsewhere. Uh, influence production, um, especially playing as the House Atreides. If I would like to go more in a sort of friendship kind of route, this would actually fit really well with my faction is to go for the embassy. And I think I would like to do that. I just, I haven't really figured out how do I make friends with people? Like, let's say I wanted to be friendly with the smugglers. Do I just like give them, like, let's say I gave them, I don't know, a uh, you know, hundred Plascrete and I just, I hit trade. Okay. How can like I... their relation level didn't change. Wait, did I, was it the Fremen I talked to? Yeah, like, oh wait, I, I think that I have to wait till they accept it. Okay, so my proposal was accepted. Like I have one level of relation. So I really don't understand how I increase my relations with these people. That's like one part of the game that I haven't yet figured out. So I would like to play diplomatically. I think it would be fun. So kind of thinking about the positioning of my empire, let's do overlay. So I have a flying base here. I have one here. So I can hit all these villages relatively quickly. I'm going to hit these pretty quick. So Tabta and maybe even Halula, depending on how we land and stuff like that, are well protected. But I think Ultar and Hulvul are a little bit exposed. So maybe in, in Ultar, I'll drop another airport so that I can get over there a little bit. Because I, I want to play defensively. I want to play carefully. That's kind of, that kind of like feels right for me in how you should play House Atreides. Uh, but we do, we do have control of a new village. So I'm going to go ahead and build the processing plant, which is the unique building for this, which will allow us to get Solari production. So boom. And also we found uh, an abandoned Fremen camp. I'm going to go ahead and study the tracks so that I can uh, find the siege that's over here in my territory because if I can trade with the siege and actually make friends with them I will get some empire-wide bonuses. I'm going to hire this water seller caravan to spread propaganda because authority is the hardest resource in the game to get a hold of and it will allow me to continue to expand very aggressively and I would like to continue to expand to the east here, Tabta. Although I might take Ha Alula and use it as a forward operating base defensively against the blue player. It's a pretty aggressive move but I think it's an okay move. I have an unassigned agent. I'm going to put him in the Landsrad. I want to have good infiltration on the Landsrad. I don't know what the... Yeah, because I want the... Um, I want to infiltrate the Landsrad for the influence because influence and authority are like my bread and butter resources for expansion. So we got the processing plant. The wind here isn't really that strong. More Plascrete would suit me. And I think I will because I haven't been building much Plascrete. I've got two of them and I'm, I'm burning through my Plascrete pretty quickly now. So I want to have a nice supply. All right, lovely. We increased sitch detection. And there it is. We found them. So we found the sitch esh alda. Now we can attack this and kill them. And by killing them, we'll get some benefits. However, if we make friends with them, they will also give us some sort of benefit. So I can go ahead and trade 10 water for one authority here. Um, and this will also naturally increase our relationship level. And then after enough time, I'll be able to assign an agent to gain an empire-wide bonus. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I love authority. And I had the spare water. Uh, where's my best wind speed area right now? I think it's a four that I have. Yeah, this is a two over here. So I think my best wind speed is a four. Ultar will actually... 
Ultar I'll be able to get a lot of water from, so I'll hold on then. Probably a good time to go up to four units and have them positioned around different places. Uh, let's see. So we've got a new lands for vote. All factions' infiltration levels are reduced by two. Ooh, kind of good, actually. I would vote like three times for that. Troop recruitment costs? I'm okay with this too, because I don't plan to recruit. I could just quickly recruit one right now. And I definitely, I really, really, really want this one. I want to get the Chome Spice to the point where I'm actually going to like tank my support of these other resolutions to get even more influence here. And I'm going to hold on to influence and potentially look to generate more. Huval got his Plascreed Factory. Let's unlock another slot and think about what our next step is. Military base would give my troops a bonus. Craft Workshop does kind of push me in the direction of a victory, or I could get a data center. I think I'm not worried about doing intel projects, although it would be a good idea to have um, gear sabotage prepared so I can reduce enemy power. And I think I want to keep getting more influence, so I'll pop down an influence producer here. But yeah, if I could get this extra money, it would uh, it would allow me to develop Arakeen like way more efficiently. Actually. Speaking of developing Arakeen, I need to look for um, things that I can generate money from. So you go ahead and do that project. Where are you? No, that's not what I want. I'm looking for something like this. Yeah, perfect. A crashed uh, shuttle. I'll be able to use that to make money. And then you, you're continuing to explore. There's nothing around here that I can make use of. Okay. So I think I'm going to continue to expand like south and east. I'd like to get even more spice fields. That would be like ideal. But I'm feeling really good about my economy right now. It's, it's, it's really early into the game, but I'm feeling really strong. So I got spying logistics. My spies are going to generate faster. Now I could pick up Atreides delegations here, which would hurt other people's stances. Or I could go for water seller contracts. Local hubs is quite good. Try to think about what my next move is. I think I would like... Hmm, one more agents to the lands, Rad. Opposing factions generate Solari. Open borders. Support structures, ground command. This would let me have more military. Plus five Solari. I think modular parts is now the move. This will allow me to uh, start to generate more and more spice because I'll be able to use my manpower on my spice harvester. So that's the direction I'll go. Uh, so modular parts is the next technology. Nice, we got our mission to succeed. We got a hold of a gear sabotage. I don't think we need to do any probe setups or anything like that. I think we can kind of just hold on to our horses. We got another point of interest. There's some plas uh, plascrete and then there's some extra money. And so now we're very, very close to doing what we need. How are we doing on Imperial tax? I think I can heavily lower my stockpiling. Ooh, a little bit too low there. I can think I can heavily lower my stockpiling in order to increase how much um, money I'm making so I can finally get one of these critical buildings. The question is, which one do I want now? Ooh, intelligence agency. 200% agent recruitment speed. That's kind of pog, actually. That's pretty huge. Ah, right, we got control of Ultar. I think Ultar is isolated enough, and it would help me control Hulval if I were to get an airfield here, here first, so I will do that. And then I probably want to get the water, uh, the wind traps for the water. New village controlled, Landsrad vote is happening soon. And now it's time to finally build a building in here. I feel like Research Center is just really good. Especially if I build it here, I would also get an extra 10% economy development and it would lower the upkeep of my research production buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the research center. It's super expensive and it takes 10 days to build, but it will give me a huge advantage when it comes to knowledge. Okay, cool. So Harkonnen is quite happy that we voted the same way in the council. Looks like we all supported the these things and I managed to sneak in and grab this huge spice win. Um, which I'm really happy about. That means I'm going to be making serious bank here because I'm getting 30% more money than other people are for my spice. So he'd like to buy my influence and my Plascrete for money. I'm not that desperate for money right now. Most of the buildings I plan to build only cost Plascrete. And I'm working on increasing my money income by getting modular parts. Ooh, nice. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. We want to get the wind trap because that's six water per wind region. That's like insane. This is going to be a huge win for me from the water perspective. And also, it gives me 500 hedge money. It's a unique area. Um, so that's going to help me on my victory here. I'm already at 4,000 hedge money. Probably about time I started thinking about expansion here. And uh, I would like to expand. But oh yeah, the problem is I'm waiting for the water from Ultar. That's right. That's what I was waiting on for my expansion. But I have a huge amount of authority banked up. And I have a good amount of influence production too. So I'm feeling good about my position. I think it wouldn't be a terrible idea in Zarya 
to get another Plascrete factory. They're relatively like low cost. And I should also think about a maintenance building. Um, because a maintenance building in Zarya would hit two other cities. Which would, which would, you know, be a pretty significant amount of maintenance reduction. A maintenance building in Ultar would hit f like four or five cities too. So that's something I should consider too. You always want to be getting those like AOE bonuses. Like supply caches. Uh, and um, like organized... You want, to, you want to be getting the organized supply benefit everywhere you can basically. Because it just makes your economy more efficient. Okay, let's go ahead and do that then. I'll go ahead and build the maintenance center in Ultar. That'll be my AOE... It's, it's like an AOE economy building. It's just so powerful. It's so good. But with all this like, extra water, I'm going to go ahead and claim Tabtha. And I really want Delat. It looks like some sort of raid is making its way over to Ultar. Let's add some extra units. Oh, I need Solari for that. Well, never mind then. Instead, what I will do is I'll start claiming Tabtha peacefully. I'll start claiming Dalat peacefully. And then that's all of our authority spent. So we've got two more towns coming online. One of them has a spice field and one of them has a fuel field. Sandworm detected, automatically extracting. Both of my harvesters got hit by a sandworm. And this is definitely a raid coming. And unfortunately, I don't have the money to have Arrakis diplomacy ready because I haven't made friends with the Spacers Guild. I focused on Arrakis and the Landsrad, um, which means I'm going to have to kind of play a little bit more defensively in terms of like actually defending with combat. There's a new council coming up. These happen fairly quickly, to be honest with you. Like they just, they fire off real quick. Inactive harvesters, let's go ahead and redeploy them. Get them back out there, getting the spice. Uh, I'm feeling relatively well defended. We have some militia, we have some military. Here they come, perfect. Construction complete, village under siege. Combat ongoing, construction complete, okay. I really want to make friends with the siege because, man, I love that extra authority. It's so great. It's making my life so much easier. All right, let's make sure you guys heal up. You, to heal up your units, they only have to stand inside, like, the good place. The, the, like, allied territory. So now we have access to modular parts. We could go for the Gridex plane, which would give us access to spice silos. And I, I think it's time to get our money production up. So let's go to our harvesters and add an extra crew to each of them. Because that's an extra little bit of spice, which will result in a significant money boost here. Uh, we have an unassigned agent. Great. Zara... Now, where would I like Zara to go? I feel like a lot of these missions I'm locked out of because I don't have a relationship with the Spacing Guild. So I'm going to go ahead and build my relationship with the Spacing Guild. Also, we managed to complete the Research Center, which is significantly, and I mean significantly, increasing our research rate. And plus, we also develop our economy way faster now. So I really want like all of the economy buildings. I kind of want all of these, but you, you can never get them all. You can only get some. So there's kind of a... Um, there's a careful balancing act you have to do. So at House Atreides, let's do... I think I want this authority. This would be huge. The manpower upkeep I can eat. So I'll just put like four or five votes in there. For unit recruitment cost, I don't actually care. So if I give that to maybe House Harkonnen, they will like me more. And then maybe they'll go mess up my enemies. So kind of that's how I'm thinking about here. But I definitely want Imperial Propaganda. So I'll put whatever I have left over in terms of points into that. Having a lot of influence, man, it just feels so good because you can just drop so many vo votes on the council. I really want to build, um, I really want to build a statecraft thing here. So my strategy is to just completely avoid the polar sink. As powerful as it is, and it's worth a thousand hegemony, uh, hegemony, I'm just, I'm focusing on building like an overwhelming economy and an extremely defensive empire. And I'm focusing on diplomacy. My hope is to build up my relations with these other players. How can I now I wonder, mm, I don't know if I want to do that yet. I don't know if I want to do diplomacy. Maybe I could annex, peacefully annex soon. Okay, I need a little bit more, and then I could peacefully annex. How's my relationship with the siege going? We're up to 39, which is good. So we lost a resolution. Manpower upkeep, we all supported that. I upvoted House Harkonnen. I hope they are happy that I did that. And it looks like with the Imperial propaganda, we in fact won. So we, we have that extra authority, which is great. How did Harkonnen feel about me voting for them? Really? That didn't increase the relationship level. Okay, so voting for people doesn't help your relationship. I guess I guess they recognize that I'm also just playing the great game, you know, and they're uh they're not impressed by my uh, you know, sneaky appeasement. Very unusual envy to receive Yeah, so like Harkonnen, he he gave me like a, a happy bark, right, in response, but it didn't seem to actually affect our relationship. So we just got Gridex plane. 
economic lobby lobbying would be allow me to build the Chome branch, and the Chome branch is great. Could also get access to mercenaries. I think extra assignable crew and harvesters like really fits my playstyle here. So let's keep adding crew to these harvesters. Oh, looks like we have some sort of raid, but it's actually going to someone else. And I, I hope that that's going to someone else because of my high relationship with these guys. So I feel like this is like a window into the world here for my empire. If I control this, this is like a pretty good choke point. That would mean that, you know, any attack coming from me would have to go like up and around through here or then down and around through here. So this is like an important choke point for me here. Um, whereas if someone else controls this, it allows them to attack me in two places. But if I control this, I can make this into a fortress. So I think that's what I want to do. And plus, it's also a hegemony position, and it'll allow me to produce more plascrete. So this is just a great spot to own. Paid our imperial tax, and we're well on our way to paying the next set. And we hit 5,000 hegemony, which means we now get a money or power bonus, depending on whether or not we're affected by positive or negative resolutions. Right now it's positive, so we're getting extra money. And our two new villages have just come under control. So let's start by building a airfield down here in Dalat, so that I have better control over this area. And in Tabtha, I think this was the place we wanted to build a fuel cell thing, because it has the energy sources thing. So that's going to be great. It's going to give me a ton of fuel. I have a feeling there's another siege around here somewhere in this area. So I'll probably want to do some detection work. Um, so in this abandoned Fremen camp, I'm going to go ahead and search for a siege if I can. Ooh, a ghost market operation has been triggered against me. So somebody is stealing my resources, which does not feel good. I'm probably going to have to start assigning agents to counterintelligence to protect me. Um, and it might be a good idea to increase my military again. Support drones are pretty good. I don't really have the manpower for a larger military. I think I have to rely on militia plus uh, just being able to teleport my troops around the map. I think that's the big thing that I'm, I'm relying on here. Okay, cool. We got our airfield in Dalat. I think it's time that we got our next refinery. The spice must flow. It's the most important thing that we have to get access to is just generating as much spice as humanly possible. Ah, okay. So consequences of your inaction. One of your villages will rebel against you. Okay. I think I managed to keep that from happening. I like these random events. It's kind of hard to spot them over here on the left. Maybe a suggestion to the developers would be to make them a little bit bigger, maybe like as a little panel rather than just like a little button. Um, that would be my one suggestion. Weaker unit, cheaper upkeep. Ooh. Sandworm detected underneath one of my harvesters. Harvester gets flown away. Perfect. Very, very happy. Although it does cripple my income on a temporary basis, but that's okay. So looking at my position on the map, I would really like Al Alram because this has a rare element here, which is a very reliable source of income. Also, there is um, a really good Plascrete factory over here in Ultar, because there is, in fact, a minerals factory here. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that and build a Plascrete factory in here. That'll just be great for me to uh, keep my Plascrete high, because I've been burning through Plascrete, right? Building up all these towns. Like, look, I have buildings basically everywhere. Another sandworm detection. Well, that's a rip. Let's go ahead and put our harvesters on auto recall, and then we want to fill this with manpower. So it would be good for me to increase my manpower capacity on an ongoing basis now. We do have a trade request. He wants to give me Plascrete for influence. I think my influence is way too precious and powerful for me. I want to hold on to that influence. It's like my main thing in terms of currencies that like lets me do so much more than other players. We've detected a raid, which is a little bit unfortunate. Where's my military? Let's get them flown over here. It'll take a while. I should totally now, at this point in the game, I should have just every time Arrakis Diplomacy plugged in so that I can cancel these kind of attacks. But yeah, the veteran um, the veteran militia will buy me time to get my real units engaged. Village under siege, combat ongoing, Landsrad council vote. Let's handle the council vote first. Unit power, I can deal with this because I'm playing mostly defensively. So this works in my favor. So I'll put four votes into that. Cheaper unit production or cost, I'll totally vote into that. And then agent capture chance. Who's doing really well? Looks like the Fremen are keeping up with me, so I'll just vote against them. But otherwise, I'm not too worried about this council. I'm really just waiting for um, some of these special positions to open, right? If I could get speaker of the council, that would be good. I would be able to re-roll resolutions. If I got judge of the council, I could build the Landsrad guard, which would allow me to essentially use my influence as an army. Think of these as kind of essentially the Sardaukar, but not quite, because I'm pretty sure one day they might like implement the emperor himself into the game. It'd be kind of cool if they did. Uh, we have the Dune governorship, which is actually like the win condition here, the water sell sellers union. All of these have unlock conditions, and this will probably get unlocked to the next Landsrad or two. 
and the judge of the council will probably get unlocked in the next lands rat or two. So my veteran militia is doing a great job of holding. It bought me the time I need to get over here and actually win the fight. So you could see why I, I did these things. A complication happened during one of your missions. Chance of agent capture. I, I will... Ooh. I don't want to take Landsrad standing because that's quite powerful. I'm going to add some funds to this. It's 500 money, but it uh, prevents the chance of bad things happening. So it looks like my Arrakis diplomacy play did not come out perfectly. Thinking about where I'd like to be assigned next, I think it would be good to have have one person on counterintelligence. He has a 1% chance to catch enemy agents who are assigned to my faction. So that's like over 150 days. It's a pretty good chance of catching someone. And because he is a recruiter and a merchant, he just gives me some passive benefits too. Plus, it'll also increase my command points, so I'll be able to recruit a larger army. And I think, speaking of recruiting a larger army, I think that's going to be a bit of a priority for me. As well as just generally extending my um, my income. So I'm going to start slapping down a lot of Plascrete factories. And I also need to make sure that I have... Like, Ultar has the organized supply. I can't wait till I capture Hal Alalala. I'll be able to do some cool things there. Um, where's my cheapest building? Oh, we have a negative event here. So I could lose 50 Landsrad standing or have 200 intel and just burn intel for this or build two new statecraft buildings. I was kind of thinking of building two new statecraft buildings and also doing a little bit of military stuff. So I feel like in addition, a military base here would be quite based because it would, you know, protect me pretty well. But also spice must flow. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a spice silo here. And I think that's going to be my main objective now is to get spice silos in all of my zones that are generating spice because it will increase my um my spice production by 20 percent which is not insignificant right not at all not even a little bit insignificant um it'll be expensive in terms of plascrete but it's worth it in my opinion okay we have control of ha alula now this zone is a defensive zone so i'm going to be building a military base i'm going to be building a military battery probably not an airfield but definitely maybe a recruitment office so let's go ahead and get the missile battery and the positioning of this is kind of important because if I, the more north I place it, it means they can't run through my territory for free. I place it over there. The other thing is if I place it to the south, I could protect Turo Rack if I decide to go for Tur You know what? Hold on. I've got a better idea. I'm going to move this turret as close to Turo Rack as possible. So this city is also protected by this turret if I so decide to try and take it. And I, I might actually because I can peacefully annex it and get access to another spice field. And uh, let's do it. God, I, I actually, I really, really, really enjoy this whole peaceful annexation expansion thing. It's like a very engaging and fun way to play. Uh, development research time. So we got crew training programs. We can turn more manpower into spice over time. And I think I would like the Chome branch building. So I'm going to get economic lobbying because that'll increase my Chome spice exchange rate per agent assigned to Chome, which I will do. And I can also get mercenaries. So the thing that I want is this, the Chome branch. It's quite powerful. That'll let me generate more cash. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want to start doing diplomacy stuff. Plus five max agents. Yeah, let's get more agents. So I'm going to go ahead and take countermeasures. This will increase my agent recruitment speed and give me better camouflage detection and five more agents. 